everyone, Heather here with Astrology with Heather.com and I am back with another special video. And today's topic is one that I get asked about probably the most um, in astrology readings and even from my students or from comments on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube, and that is the topic of career in astrology. And in today's video, more specifically, we're gonna be discussing your career planets or the planets that rule your 10th house and your midheaven. And so in this video, we're going to get into uh, the energy of the 10th house and the midheaven. So how are they similar? How do they differ? We're gonna discuss the ruling planets and how to determine the ruling planets. You can have actually up to four uh, career planets that rule your 10th house and your midheaven. And we're also going to discuss what those represent in the birth chart. And then we're going to get into a discussion of the energy of these career planets in all 12 houses. At the end of this video, I'm going to briefly discuss some additional considerations because when we're looking at career and astrology, there are a lot of different things in the chart you want to look at, not just these planets. And so we're going to discuss pretty much um, a, a more holistic view of what you want to look at at the end of this video. And so stick around for that. Um, if you want to get some additional information and if you want to know how to do more of a full interpretation on career looking at the birth chart, but you can actually get a lot of information just by looking at the 10th house, the midheaven and the planets that rule the 10th house and the midheaven. And so that's why I'm focusing on this specific uh, consideration today. And for those of you who aren't already aware, I did a really in-depth course all about house rulerships in astrology, where I get into this specific topic and I go into um, a more detailed version of what I'm going to talk about at the end of this webinar where we get into a holistic viewpoint of how to interpret and look at career in the birth chart. I also give a lot of examples of 10th house and midheaven rulers in all sorts of different houses and house placements. And if you haven't already done so, I highly recommend going back and watching my free video, which was a preview of a bonus webinar I did for that course where I looked at the energy of the midheaven and the IC when it's not placed in the 10th house in whole sign houses. Speaking of which, in this video, I'm going to be talking about the rulerships using whole sign houses specifically. That is how I do house rulerships. That's how I have, through my experience, found um, things to work best and to uh, be most accurate, especially when it comes to making specific predictions. And so um, I highly recommend if you haven't already played with it, looking at your house rulers using whole sign houses. And the way that you can find your whole sign house chart is you just hop on over to astro.com, plug in your birth information, go to extended chart selection, and then there's a drop down menu for the house system, click whole sign houses, and then make that chart. So <laughs> if you haven't already looked at that, I highly recommend taking a peek at the very least for uh, the purpose of interpreting house rulers, because it does tend to work better um, if you're using whole sign houses versus Placidus or a different quadrant house system. Again, you can use these things. Other people do it. This is just what I've found to work best in my own personal experience. I was taught using Placidus. I've used Placidus for house rulerships um, probably longer than I used whole sign houses even. And as soon as I started using whole sign houses instead of Placidus to interpret house rulerships, it was like a whole new world opened up and I was able to make much more more accurate interpretations and give a lot more detail in my readings. And so that's why I use that. Um, but let's get into the 10th house versus the midheaven. Um, and so for a lot of you in whole sign houses, even you'll have your midheaven in the 10th house. If that's the case, then the planets that rule the midheaven and that rule the 10th house are going to be the same, obviously. For others, you're going to have the midheaven pretty much it can be anywhere in the chart. Um, it can be anywhere from the 12th to the seventh house, although it's very rare for it to be in the seventh and the 12th, it can actually happen. Um, and so you can have this big variation between the energy of the 10th house and the energy of the midheaven. The 10th house and the midheaven both have similar significations. The 10th house is the house that represents career, public reputation. Um, it represents 
your relationship with people in positions of authority. It's your success out in the world and what you're recognized and remembered for. It's your legacy. Um, so that's part of that 10th house energy. The midheaven carries basically those same significations. However, it's more of a concentrated point of energy and it can be located in a number of different houses. When it's located in a house other than the 10th house, uh, the significations of career become linked with the significations of that house. And again, I highly recommend going back and watching the video about the midheaven in the houses if you haven't already done so as sort of a prerequisite to understanding the concepts that we're presenting in this video today. Um, but that's kind of what's going on there. So the midheaven is more like a power point or an energetic point where things manifest there. It's kind of like a concentrated point of energy where when it's hit by a transit or by another influence, um, things happen very powerfully <laughs> that are related to your career, your public standing, your relationship with people in positions of authority, the way other people see you sort of on a, on a bigger scale, your legacy, all of these things that we just talked about. Um, and so it's kind of a more concentrated energy and it's a more potent energy, um, as opposed to the 10th house, which is just like this whole house that cont contains all of these topics. The midheaven is more of, it's more concentrated. So it's concentrated to just a couple of degrees, um, within that conjunction range to the midheaven, which is one of the angles in the chart. Um, and so it's a little bit different, but it's, it's basically, they both carry similar significations. And so when you're looking for the planets in your chart that represent career and career related activities that represent your success or your potential for success out in the world that represent your reputation, public standing, what you're known for, even after you've you're passed on and you're no longer on this earth, the way that you impact the world at large, you're going to want to look at the planets that rule the 10th house and the midheaven. And so you want to find your 10th house and find which sign occupies the 10th house. You're also going to want to find the midheaven and find what sign the midheaven is located within. Those two signs are going to be very important for you to understand the symbology around because that will give you a layer of information that will also be important. But you also want to look at these um, career planets as sort of trigger points or um, as representing career topics and career themes within your birth chart and it'll be applicable in other areas of life or, or it'll connect other areas of life to your career and it'll show kind of like what topics and what areas you're going to be known for. So that's what we're going to be doing here. And so if your 10th house or your midheaven um, is in Aries uh, your career planet is going to be Mars. If your 10th house or your midheaven is in Taurus, your career planet is going to be Venus. If your 10th house or your midheaven is in Gemini, your career planet is going to be Mercury. Mercury. <laughs> um, if your 10th house or your midheaven is in the sign of Cancer, your career planet is going to be the moon. If your 10th house or your midheaven is in Leo, your career planet is going to be the sun. If your 10th house or midheaven is in the sign of Virgo, your career planet will be Mercury once again. Um, if your 10th house or your midheaven is in Libra, your career planet will once again be uh, Venus. If your 10th house or your midheaven is in Scorpio, this is where things get a little bit trickier. The traditional ruler of Scorpio is Mars, and so that will be the predominant energy for your career planet. You'll see the most physical or outward manifestation of the interpretation using the planet Mars. However, the co-ruler or the modern ruler of Scorpio is Pluto. So Pluto is another planet that is very important to look at um, in addition to Mars. So you will have two rulers for either your midheaven or your 10th house if one of those or both of those is in the sign of Scorpio. If your midheaven or 10th house is in Sagittarius, your career planet is Jupiter. If your midheaven or 10th house is in Capricorn, then your career planet is Saturn. 
If your midheaven or 10th house is in Aquarius, then you once again have two career planets. The traditional ruler of Aquarius is Saturn, and that's where you're going to see more of the physical, like outward manifestation of the career energy um, in terms of actual, more literal topics and events. However, you also really want to look at the planet Uranus because that's going to give another layer of information. Uranus being the modern ruler of Aquarius in astrology. And so, for those who have Aquarius in your mid as the um as the as the sign where your midheaven or your 10th house is placed or both, you're going to want to look at both Saturn and Uranus. Um, and then moving on to Pisces. Pisces is the final sign that has two rulers. And so the traditional ruler of Pisces is Jupiter. And so the planet Jupiter is going to show you more of an external, outward, more literal interpretation and manifestation, but you're also going to want to look at the modern ruler of Pisces which is Neptune that's going to give you additional information and so if your 10th house or your midheaven are in the sign of Pisces then Neptune and Jupiter are going to be planets for you to look at and so you can have just one career planet, you can have two, you can have three, or you can have four career planets if you're looking at both the traditional and modern rulership. And so there's a lot of different things that might be important in your career. And it also might be a lot more challenging to synergize all of those energies if you have multiple career planets. And when I get people who come to me who are very confused about their path, their purpose, and especially Actually, their direction in their career, they usually have a few different things going on. The main one being that they have their midheaven in whole sign houses, not placed in the 10th house. So they have two signs that represent career, and then they have at least two planets that are their career planets. And so their energy becomes more scattered and it's a hard, it's a harder, um, thing to sort of figure out in terms of like your career path and really your your main focus because you have multiple areas of focus and a lot of different topics and themes you have to synergize and incorporate in your career in order to, to be successful, to feel successful, and to accomplish what you came here to accomplish. And that can take longer. Um, and so I'll, I'll see that a lot with people who have just a lot of confusion and difficulty in figuring out their place place when it comes to their career. And so that's just something that I wanted to mention here. Um, and so I'm going to get into the career planets in the 12 houses. And basically what this is going to show is certain areas of emphasis or certain topics that are emphasized or that are really important when it comes to your career, your public standing, what you're known for, the legacy you leave behind, um, your ability to be successful, to be well-known, to be recognized. And um, all of these different topics, all of these different houses are going to become more important when it comes to your career. And so um, I'm going to pull up a little my little PDF here. And so this PDF file is actually available for you to download for free. This is my mastering the 12 houses cheat sheet that you can print out and use. It doesn't show every single signification for all of the houses, but it shows the main ones and what I consider to be the most important ones. And so this is a very helpful little guide that you can again, download for free. The link is down in the description below and follow along there. And I'm going to scoot over so you can see me a little better <laughs> as I'm I'm talking here. Um, but so you, you're going to want to listen for your career planet in all of the different houses. You're also going to want to take into consideration the symbolism that is associated with the signs where the midheaven and ice or in, and 10th house are placed. You're also going to want to consider the symbolism that is associated with the planets that are your career planets. You're going to want to also, of course, um, look at things like aspects to the career planets to tell a bigger or more important story and to show you also if you have an easy time with your with your career if you are easily able to achieve a lot of success get that recognition do that big thing or if you have some challenges there um, by looking at the aspects to the career planets that's not something we're going to cover in depth in here but of course i do have that course on house rulerships where i talk about this more in depth and you can find that down in the description below 
Okay, and so the career planets in the 12 houses. So if the career planets are in the first house, the first house, so especially that 10th house, that, that midheaven ruler, if you have that in the first house, usually you are, this is one of the um, one of the signatures for somebody who is famous or well-known. Also having the ruler of the first house in the 10th or uh, in a conjunction with the midheaven can be a similar energy, but you'll find a lot of celebrities or a lot of people who are really big and really well known in their field will have the 10th house ruler or the midheaven ruler or both in that first house, especially when it's really close to the ascendant. And especially when there's also some Pluto energy, I've noticed that can make you like hyper, like crazy famous. Um, but that's something to really look for. So basically you are your business then. You have to be front and center. You have to be the one out there that people are seeing. In order for you to be successful, you really have to be out there, putting yourself out there, putting your face out there, making a name for yourself. You are going to be known in some way for what it is that you're doing. Um, and so, and that's also going to be a big important theme and a big important topic in your life. Career is going to be very integral to your identity and the development of your identity and the way that you view yourself and the way other people view you. It's like people view you as, as your career almost, or as your career path. And so, um, that can be a big thing also with the mid heaven and the 10th house ruler in that first house. Um, this could also, yeah, it's more about you, like your personality, who you are, your persona, like that's a big part of your business or your career. And this is an energy where you can come out on top. You can be really well known in your field for better or for worse you really have to look at all of the planets there and that doesn't mean that you're really well known early on either again there are other significations you have to look at um, it doesn't always show up exactly this way or early on in life or in a way that's positive um, again that's why you have to look at the chart more holistically for the second house, um, a very important aspect of your career and your public reputation and what you're known for, the legacy you leave behind, is going to be finance, material possessions, money. This also indicates that if you work really hard and you're putting yourself out there and you're very driven in your career, you can make a lot of money. And so this is you um, you know, getting a lot of income coming in through your own efforts, your own hard work, especially if the planets are benefit planets like Venus or Jupiter, um, or if they are nicely aspected or in good dignity and so again all of these things you have to consider but this can be somebody who works in finance this can be somebody who works with money or material possessions or works in accounting um, you know even working with property that could be a big part of this too uh, food is another thing too that people don't realize is associated with the second house it's one of those material foundational things that you need in order to survive and thrive and so sometimes there can be um, an association with food, um, maybe even like being a chef or something like that, that can be in that second house, especially if your second house is occupied by Cancer or Taurus. Um, I've seen that happen a couple of times. And so those are some of the significations and some of the energies that you have to bring into your career in order to be successful. That doesn't mean necessarily that you are an accountant or that you work in a bank or something like that. It can, but this could also be that um, really good bookkeeping and a, keeping a really good eye on your financial situation, investing in material possessions and property, um, you know, doing things on that financial level very actively can be important or you might end up being really well known for being wealthy or for being maybe not so wealthy depending on, you um, you know, the way that that shows up in your chart or for your financial contributions to something. So these are all things that can show up with that second house energy. Uh, the career planets in the third house, this one, um, I had a couple examples of this in my in my course, um, but the ones that I really like are the ones where the person, um, I have one where I think the person was a, like a journalism major or something like that because the third house represents writing, communication. Um, it's also early education. I know someone personally who has their um, career planet in the third house and they work in an early education setting and they work with um, speech and language specifically, which are third house topics. Um, there are 
are plenty of writers, especially um, writers who write things that are smaller, like blogs, or they do marketing or copywriting or something like that, who will have this energy. Also, this is an energy where you can work in analytics, communication, intelligence. Um, I have some examples of that as well. Or it could be that you're working um, with your siblings or your career and your public reputation is tied into your siblings. And so maybe you have a sibling who's famous and you're like known for being their sibling. Or it could be that you have like an uncle or an aunt or a cousin who's famous and you're like known for being their relative in some way. Um, this could also be somebody who works within their community, like a community activist. It could be somebody who works within the transportation system. So short distance travel, vehicles, things like that. Um, you could even be like working at a car dealership maybe, um, especially if you have other indicators for something like that for sales, for that second house energy, right? Um, and so there's a lot of different things that this could really represent, but it's it's mostly about movement, community, communication, education. Um, a lot of like really great teachers, especially early education, but teachers in general can have this placement, writers, um, people who use their mind a lot or use their voices a lot or write a lot to share information in their work. Um, and again, that travel component can be there too. Okay. And then, um, so looking at the fourth house, so having the career planets in the fourth house can mean a lot of different things. Um, one of the things that's most obvious is that the person can work in real estate or they could, um, you know, do work in some sort of career involving the home or real estate. They could be maybe an interior designer if they have Venus as their career planet in the fourth house. And there are other indicators for being creative or working in design. Uh, they could be somebody who does remodeling or construction specifically on homes. They could be somebody who, um, you know, does surveys property or does inspections or something like that. Maybe they're a landlord, maybe they own properties and that's how they make their money or they manage property in some way. This could also indicate working from home or having a home-based business. This could also indicate having a family business because the fourth house is your legacy and your ancestry. And so this could be having a business that's tied in with your family members in some way or having family members work for you or work within the business or within the company um, or your ancestry or your heritage is somehow tied in to your business in a way that's really important, um, or you're known, like you're well known for your family or for your ancestry or your heritage in some way. Um, the fifth house energy, this one uh, is actually kind of interesting. Um, I know someone who, you know, works with children who has this as well, who has the, I think the ruler of is either the midheaven or the 10th house in the fifth house and they work specifically with children. Um, and so this is an energy where you could work with children. <laughs> so, um, working with children, working in a child care setting or a daycare setting. I actually have an example that I used in my course where there was a really strong fifth house energy and they worked a lot with children in a lot of different settings. And so children can be a theme and working with children can be a theme and that can actually enhance your success in your career so that way you can you know hit your goals accomplish things be recognized for what it is that you're doing this is also a house that's associated with creativity this is a house that's associated with entrepreneurs and so a lot of people who have this placement of the ruler of the midheaven ruler of the 10th house in the fifth they can be entrepreneurs they can start their own business usually they're more like solo entrepreneurs or they are sort of front and center um as opposed to like owning a giant corporation, although that can sometimes be there, maybe if there's some Capricornian energy or something else going on. But um, usually, yeah, usually it's more like um, they are front and center and it's their creation. I see like a lot of solo entrepreneurs or people who are self-employed who have this specific placement. Maybe that's because I don't know a lot of people who own like a fortune 500 company. So, um, but in terms of what I've seen looking at, you know, famous people who own large businesses, I haven't seen that as much as like solo entrepreneurs, um, who are kind of more doing their own thing. This is a, another house that's associated with actors, um, and performance. And so that could be an energy there, especially if there's some strong Leo energy going on with the midheaven, the 10th house or the, or the fifth where the, uh, the ruler, the career planets are placed. Um, 
And this is just a house where you need to be creative, expressive, romantic. Um, yeah, this could even be like someone working or like owning a dating app or something like that because it is like the house of romance or sex and sexuality, sex therapists, sex and marriage counselors. I've seen with some types, with some of these types of placements actually in the fifth house. And so that could be a thing as well. Um, so there's a lot of different things that could be associated with that fifth house. The fifth house is the house of play. And so you can see people here who um, make their living through video games, board games, something involving sports. That's another big one too, actually, I should mention is that sports and, um, and, you know, physical activities. So people who especially play in like team sports and things like that can be, um, can have that strong fifth house energy with their career planets as well. Uh, career planets in the sixth house. These people can be workaholics. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Especially if there's a first house energy there involved too. <laughs> These are people that work, 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 and don't stop. And they're very well known usually with the ruler of the 10th or the ruler of the midheaven in the sixth house for being workaholics. Um, Steve Jobs is a good example of this. He had the ruler of his ascendant and the ruler of his 10th house were both Mercury, I believe, because he had, um, he had, uh, Gemini in one and um, and Virgo in the other, and he had Mercury in the sixth house, and he was very well known for just working, working, working nonstop, um, in you know expecting that of his employees and calling really crazy meetings that lasted really late into the night, and then having another meeting first thing in the morning, and um, yeah, he he pushed himself quite hard. Um, and so these people are people that work quite hard. Um, this could also indicate a career in service, in the service industry, or as a caregiver or caretaker of some kind where you're showing up in service to help other people. This can indicate career, um, a career that involves sixth house themes of health, healing, especially nutrition or like very physical types of healing. This can indicate having animals uh, tied to your career in some way. So maybe you work with animals, maybe you're a veterinarian, health of animals, um, those types of things. Um, or, you know, it could just very literally indicate like you're known for like working way too hard, like Steve Jobs. Um, also it could indicate that you're known for an illness like Steve Jobs and some other people that I've used as examples in my, um, in my course where, you know, Steve Jobs actually died of pancreatic cancer. And that was something that became a part of his legacy and a part of what was, what he was known for because he was a public figure. And so he went through that in the public eye. And so that's another thing that can potentially happen with that sixth house energy. Um, but this is a great placement for healers, especially if there are other indicators for that. Um, and so it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have health problems and that's like a big thing that people know about. It could be that you're known for healing and helping other people um, in that way. Okay, and then the seventh house. The seventh house is a really great energy for working one-on-one -on -one with people. This is a great energy for partnering up in business. So having some sort of business partnership, um, maybe you're really well known for your business partnership. Like you work in combination with somebody, maybe you own a law firm with somebody else and you have a partner, right? Um, and you know, in your community or in your town, like you're really well known. Uh, that could be a big thing that could happen with that seventh house energy. I've seen this happen a lot actually where people will get tied up with um, their marriage partners or their romantic partners um, with their businesses and so they'll go into business with their spouse or with their significant other for better or for worse you'd really have to look at the additional indicators and planetary aspects and things like that to know if that's going to work well <laughs> or if there might be complications um, but I have definitely seen that happen also working one-on-one -on -one with people in maybe a consulting or a coaching or a counseling or some sort of healing setting um, or being like a marriage therapist even, that could be something too. Working in law, um, especially um, in types of law where it's like one person against another, so not like Supreme Court or something like that more like um, like lawsuits and things like that, you know, between two parties. That could be another indicator with the ruler of the midheaven, ruler, ruler of the 10th house in the seventh. Um, ruler, the career planets in the eighth house. <laughs> so this one's a little bit interesting. I have a few examples of this, um, you know, in my back pocket as well, but um, this can indicate 
working in an area that is considered to be taboo. Um, and this could be, you know, anything from conspiracy to occult sciences, um, to sexuality. I've seen people who have this placement working in the sex industry. Um, I've seen people, you know, who have this placement working with the occult or the occult sciences being really great astrologers, being really great, uh, you know, people who work in sort of esoteric fields or do things that are involving like magic or things that are just kind of demonized and that are considered taboo and that aren't necessarily talked about so much in our modern society. Um, this is also a really great place for a researcher. <laughs> um, so if you're somebody who likes to dive deep and get to the bottom of things, but you're not necessarily wanting to be out there in the public, you know, showing off and things like that, you're more behind the scenes figuring out the pieces, um, that's a great eighth house or a great, um, a great thing to incorporate into your career if you have those career planets in the eighth house. Um, yeah. And the other thing too, psychology, of course. So I know a lot of really great healers and I've had clients who are incredible psychologists, psychotherapists, psychiatrists who have that energy of the ruler of the midheaven or the ruler of the 10th house in the eighth house. That's another really great one. Um, and so you can do that healing in general, like the eighth house, you don't think about being one of the houses where it considers where it's con associated with health and healing, but it's like a deeper form of healing. You're dealing with the core issues on a psychological, spiritual, and, emo and an emotional level that might be contributing to something that's happening on the physiological level. And so a lot of really great, powerful healers who have the ability to, to really get in there, dig deep, get to the bottom of things and transform um, that person's experience and heal them from the inside out. That is a great um, example of somebody who have like a strong positive energy of the career planets in the eighth house. Um, oh, and the other thing too, so death, <laughs> I had a really good example actually in my webinar of somebody who when, when she was young, she wanted to be a mortician <laughs> and then she grew up and she got, um, a master's in economics. So she's like, she, she you know, wanted to work with money and be, be an economist, which would also be an eighth house thing, working with other people's finances, working with debt, working with, um, inheritance, working with insurance. Those would all be eighth house topics and themes, or very literally working with death, being like a death doula, a mortician, um, you know, working in hospice care, something like that, that, that could be another indicator for the eighth house. Um, Ninth house, ninth house. So career planets in the ninth house, um, adventurers, teachers, explorers, um, people who travel a lot or have a lot of connections with foreign countries in their work. When I was doing my research for my um, house rulership course, I found a lot of really high level, like high ranking military officers who had the ruler of the midheaven or the ruler of the 10th house or the ruler of their ascendant in that ninth house. And so at first that was kind of, I was a little confused about that, but then I thought about it. People who go into the military, they travel all over the world, right? And so that connection with people who are in foreign countries um, and that energy too around law and legality and all of that, um, I mean, those types of things would make sense for somebody who's a career like military person. So I saw a lot of that. Um, Buzz Aldrin, I think was one of the examples of someone who had, oh no, he had the ruler of his ascendant in the ninth house and I'm thinking about that but there were there were some strong placements there about people who are like traveling around the world um and that military energy, but a lot of really prominent philosophers, teachers, um, religious figures, even who are really well known for those types of things can have that energy of the mid heaven or the, uh, 10th house ruler in the ninth house. And so there's this energy around philosophy, religion, foreign countries, um, and also teaching and sharing knowledge. This is an energy where somebody could work in a college or higher educational setting. This is the house too, that you used to be associated in traditional astrology with astrology. And so astrologers sometimes have really prominent ninth house placements. Um, and I mean, I myself have really prominent ninth house placements, not the ruler of my 10th house, but still, um, people who go into those fields sometimes will have that. Um, what else with the ninth house? 
I feel like I covered a lot there. Um, you could be somebody who works as like a flight attendant, who's an airline pilot. I saw a lot of pilots too who had that energy, um, not just in the military. And so, you know, those types of things can be in the ninth house as well. Uh, law, especially like higher law, like the Supreme Court or like higher um, court systems within whatever country you're in, that can be in the ninth house too. Or international law, that's another one that can be really prominent there. And so there are a lot of different things that can show up with that ninth house energy. But you need to incorporate, if you have the ruler of the 10th house or the midheaven in the ninth house, you need to incorporate some of those energies. So either working with people in foreign countries, traveling for work, uh, teaching and or educating other people, all of these themes can help you to become more successful and get more recognition in your work. Ruler of the 10th house and the 10th. These people are um, usually quite successful in business because <laughs> the 10th house is business. They can be, um, you know, they can be actually very well known in whatever field that they're in. It doesn't necessarily have to be business, but sometimes they can be um, in more leadership positions. So this indicates, this is the house that represents power and authority figures in your relationship to authority figures. And a lot of times when you have those uh, career planets in the 10th house, you yourself will become one of those authority figures. Work will be very important. You'll be very driven toward career success and being at the top of the hierarchy. And um, you might actually have a lot of connections with people who are in higher positions in your field and things like that. And that can help to sort of further you along. Um, but usually people who have this placement, unless there's other indicators, can be very successful and very well known within their field. And that's a big thing. Um, but, you know, owning a business, starting a business, working for a corporation and kind of working your way up to the top, those can be things in that 10th house feel or that 10th house energy. Um, it's really more about the business and the structure and kind of being at the top there. Um, unless there's something else going on, usually these people will be more successful and they will kind of accomplish a lot <laughs> in their career path. Um, yeah, and so that's that 10th house energy. Uh, the 11th house energy, this is where um, a person can find a lot of success or be well known for their social circles or for um, the causes that they represent or that they work for or help out through their work. Um, this is a very socially minded person. Um, this is somebody who is very good with networking. Networking also is going to be really important for people who have the ruler of the midheaven and the ruler of the the 10th house in the 11th house because it's through your friends that you're going to gain the most success. Um, for you, success isn't necessarily having a high status or having like a name on your, your name tag or your like whatever that thing is on your desk, your desk nameplate <laughs> that's like CEO or whatever it is like it would be with the ruler of the 10th and the 10th. Um, it's more about social recognition and social rewards that you get. So, um, you know, through, through recognition from your peers and recognition from other people in your life. Um, but this is a really great energy for working with friends, working with groups of people, working in group settings, leading group work. Um, this is also an energy that's connecting people all over the world, right? It's the way that we connect with groups of people like on a larger scale. And it's also a house that's associated with the internet. And so you can have a lot of success working through technology, working via the internet, connecting through social social networking, uh, things like that via the internet as well. I see a lot of people who have a strong internet presence uh, having the ruler of the 10th house in the 11th. Um, I actually have that placement. <laughs> and also I, I work a lot with my friends, right? And so I bring um, a lot of my astrologer friends and tarot reader friends and all of that onto my channel. And I have them on regularly because I like to work with my friends, right? And um you know, my friends help me out as well when it comes to my career. And ha a lot of my friends have been like really important parts of me becoming successful. Uh, but that internet presence is a part of it too. And, and, you know, being a part of a network. So those things can all be with the uh, career planets in the 11th house. Another thing too could be, again, that humanitarian energy. So you could have some sort of business that does some sort of humanitarian aid or does something that is for the good of all concern that's supposed to better humanity in some way um, where you're helping people on a broader scale. That would be another 11th house energy with the career planets placed in that house. 
Finally, uh, the career planets in the 12th house. This one's a little bit different. Um, <laughs> this is usually, I mean, you might have multiple career planets. You might have like a bunch of stuff in the 10th house and then just the maybe one of your planetary rulers in the 12th house. So it really depends. You do have to look at the whole picture, but if it's just the ruler of the 10th and the mid heaven in the 12th house, this is somebody who's most likely going to be working behind the scenes, not necessarily going to be out there in the public eye, um, working in secret, working behind closed doors, doing things, uh, working on secret projects. <laughs> um, this is somebody who could work in very literally a 12th house institution or could find success through um, these institutions in some way through incorporating or working with these institutions in their work, um, which include basically any type of institution where you go to sort of hide away from the world. So hospitals, also a lot of like prominent people who work in medicine um, and who are really incredible doctors and healers of some kind can have the ruler of the 10th and mid heaven in the 12th house, um, unless they, they have something else that indicates that they'll be famous or really well known for being healers. They might not be well known for that, but it might actually um, be a really important part of their success. And they might might be very good at it and so that's part of that too but the 10th house is hospitals and so people might work in hospitals they might work in a prison system i've actually seen someone who was like a prison system like advocate in some way who had that type of placement um you could work and you could be like an advocate because this is an energy that's um, associated with people who are less fortunate and this is associated with charity um, sometimes martyrdom too so people can be known as like martyrs they like sacrifice themselves for the good of other people or to help other people or they could very literally be martyrs in their career it's like you're doing so much for other people that you're putting yourself um, at detriment or you're doing it in in, um, in a way that's inhibiting your success, right? Um, that can be part of it too. But charity work is a big one in the 12th house. Uh, those institutions, so like rehabilitation centers, spiritual retreat centers, people can have careers that are associated very strongly with spirituality um, or mysticism or intuition. Uh, people who maybe are psychics or intuitives and or channelers or something like that, they can have placements in the in the 12th house connected with their career um but other places like asylums temples monasteries ashrams um, also there's energy too in the 12th house associated with cults. That's something that I've noticed multiple times after having many, many clients who are involved in some way with cults. Um, so that is a thing just so you know. Um, so maybe, you know, you are a cult leader and you have the ruler of the mid heaven or the ruler of the, um, the 10th house in the 12th house, right? That could be a thing too. Not saying that you should go out and be a cult leader if you have that placement. Um, but it could be one of the significant vacations um, for those who are interested in that. Um, what else? Yeah. Also working with past lives. That's a big one. So working with like hypnosis, working with trance states, working with altered states of consciousness and working with like past and even future life progression, but like past life regression, especially because the 12th house contains that past life energy. That's another thing that can be um, with the ruler, the, the career planets <laughs> in the 12th house. Um, and yeah, so I feel like that's, that's enough for right now with all of that. I feel like I covered that pretty in depth with that 12th house energy there. So let's move on to just a couple of different things that I want you guys to consider in addition to the, um, the planetary rulers of the mid heaven and the 10th house, the career planets. If you want to look at the energy of um, of the career more holistically. And I actually have another PDF download that's actually left over from my business and career webinar that I did with Ksenia, which was a part of my um, bigger webinar where we looked at the astrology for the next couple of years and how that's going to impact um, business and career decisions. We looked at um, career and business and, um, and the connection and also disconnection between career and life's purpose in astrology and in the astrology chart in your birth chart. And I also did a session with my personal business coach, Rita, Rita Perea, where we talked about how to navigate the energy right now during times of change. 
And so you can find that link down in the description below. That was one of my pay what you want um, donation based webinars. Um, but anyway, so I have that PDF for you guys to download as well as a free download, a gift to you guys for watching my video, subscribing to my channel, all of those things. Um, but in that PDF, I talk about a lot of different variables that you have to consider. And so it's not just the ruler of the 10th house and the ruler of the mid heaven. You also have to look at planets in the 10th house. You have to look at the sign that occupies the 10th house. You have to look at the mid heavens placement and also planets that are aligned with the mid heaven, you know, um, in aspect, especially close in degree. You have to look at the uh, placement of the career planets and how they're aspected by other planets, which I've discussed already a little bit in this video. Uh, but other places that you can look Look at that will give you a lot of information about your career are like the sixth house, which represents your day-to-day -day career tasks, your day-to-day -day activities, your place of employment, your employees, your coworkers, um, all of these things. It's also how you show up in service. And so the sixth house can be an important part and is an important part to look at too, especially when you're looking at the things that are going on behind the scenes that contribute to your success on that broader scale in terms of your overall career. Um, first house energy because that's your goals your orientation your direction in life it's a lot of the way that you show up and the way that you view the world the the sun which has that energy around authority and success and it's what your soul wants to express and needs to express in this lifetime it's not always career related but it's definitely a component that you need to look at um Second house, of course, is a house that you would look at for financial indicators. Just because you're successful in your career doesn't mean you're good with money <laughs> or doesn't mean that you're making a ton of money. Maybe you're successful in a field that doesn't pay well, right? So you need to look at that um, to get a whole picture. Um, and so there, yeah, there are a lot of different things. And the rulers of the sixth house, obviously, and the ruler of the second house, those will be important to look at. Uh, the ruler of the ascendant will be important to look at. And so it's like a whole big map. You have to get into a lot of different things. And I do cover this um, a little bit more in my um, in my planetary rulership course. Again, the link for that is down in the description below. Um, but I hope you enjoyed all of this free information <laughs> because I feel like I went into a lot of detail with this one. Um, so yeah, let me know how this lines up for you guys down in the comment section below. Where is your Where are your career planets? And how do you incorporate that energy into your career path? Or how do you maybe not incorporate that energy, but you're starting to think about how you can incorporate that energy more so in the future so you can be more successful because that's really what astrology, astrology is about. It gives us like a guidance, um, so we can understand what we were born with, what we have and what we can make use of. So that way we can just make use of it. Right? So one of the things that, um, I started looking at when I started to you know, start my business in astrology was my chart and how I was aligning or not aligning with that energy. And because my mid heavens in Leo <laughs> and because the ruler of my mid heavens in the 11th house, I realized that I needed to do more stuff on social media. And also because that Leo energy, I felt like I needed to show my face and put myself front and center, even though I really didn't want to, cause I'm a Virgo son <laughs> and that wasn't really my thing. And as soon as I started doing that, things just clicked into place and started to work for me. And so I realized that, you know, you do have a choice. It's not always that you're just instantly automatically aligning with your career planets or with the direction in your chart. Um, I mean, I had activations that started to put me in alignment there and that's when it clicked and I realized, but you know, it's not always that you're just automatically doing it. Sometimes you have to understand what's going on in your chart and then shift a little bit. And then things start to work out a lot better for you because it's more in alignment with what you were designed to do and where your strengths are. So anyway, I hope that you found this information helpful. Um, let me know in the comment section below. And if you like this video, please like the video, subscribe to my channel, and of course, share it with your friends. If you feel like they can benefit from this information, um, and I will see you guys next time. Bye everyone.